This week we're down in Coconut Grove in Miami Beach, Florida. We're going to be out fishing with Ray Rocher and live baiting. And those two things are synonymous. This guy pretty much has just revolutionized live baiting, kite fishing down here in Miami Beach. Probably one of the best fishermen in Florida for live baiting. Probably one of the best fishermen in the whole country. And I'll tell you, he's a guy that I've idolized. He's, he's inspiring. He's innovative. He's really... He's always doing more to improve the sport. And the one thing that I really love about Ray is he's not afraid to share his knowledge. You know, there's so many times that you find that people are so good at things, but they're afraid of other people discovering it. Ray's not that guy. He truly, you know, subscribes to the philosophy that it's better to share your knowledge. And that's what's so nice about hanging out with Ray. I was born and raised in Miami, and I've been a guide here uh, fishing guide since about 79 and uh, I've had Miss Britt charters since 99 and so we fish primarily out of South Miami Coconut Grove and my wife and I have R&R &R tackle that uh, we use a lot of fortunately. <laughs> it helps out on the bottom line but anyways we fish out of South Florida. Typically we're going to fish uh, you know within t 10 miles of Cape Florida. Uh, Triumph Reef to maybe Government Cut maybe a little bit further north that's generally where we target the, the different species of fish we we catch here. All right, down here, Miami, Ray Rocher, all about live bait, A to Z live bait. What do you say, Ray? This is that time of the year you said it's a good time? Kind of don't know what you're going to catch yeah. out here, but live yeah. bait's the key, right? Coolest part of this time of the year is that you, you have some wintertime fish, like the sailfish, kingfish. We also have the dolphin, the tunas, blackfin tunas, which kind of show up late April through June. As a result of all these uh, kinds of fish that we're we're really hoping for you got to have a pretty good variety of bait so most days start out this way out here sitting on a marker trying to catch some live bait we got some out of your pen you had some pilchers penned up we're trying to catch some bayou some some fred fins so so important is to start with that live bait we're going to do several different techniques fly the kites which is your uh, probably what you're most known for flat lining just Seeing what we can do here in the Triton. Obviously, it's a little bit smaller boat than you're used to working with, but it's all right. We're gonna make it work. I'm right? happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's bigger than an inner tube. <laughs> That's true. I've seen you do that before. <laughs> they don't discriminate. You know, they're using anything from mullet to pinfish, sardines, you know, white bait, which is the scaled sardines, threadfin herrings, which we call greenies, uh, you know, the goggle eye, which is like the quintessential sailfish bait. This is the place that really put live baiting on the map. These guys are super serious about their live bait. They take the preservation of their bait very seriously, the catching of their bait very seriously. If you want to learn anything about live baiting, especially for offshore, this is the place to do it. See how that's wobbly? What that tells me is I opened the bridle up a little bit. Too far? I opened it too far, yeah. So I just shortened the bridle a little bit. It should make it fly stable. If you just hooked a bait in the back, usually that opens up a big hole in the tissue over time. But when you bridle, it allows you to position the hook on that band in one spot. You don't get the hook turning back in their gills, yep. right? No matter okay. where you turn it. And secondly, it doesn't wear a hole, especially if we go in the back. The way we're rigging these uh, kite rings into the clips is uh, with a small tension clip that uses this metal ring as kind of a mediator or a pulley. These clips all have graduated holes, 1 16th, 1 8th, 3 16th and quarter. So as the kite line goes out, these flossed marks grab the clips at different intervals, usually about 70 feet apart. Yeah, free spool, click her off. Go, 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 lock it up, lock it up. There he is. How about them apples? That didn't take long. That might be a tuna the way he's digging. So the way you're pinching on the way up is absolutely perfect. It doesn't hurt the line at all. It gives you an extra couple pounds. Do you do that a lot tarpon fishing? Yeah. The coolest part is if he makes a run, you let go. It's, yeah. it's the quickest way. You start playing with the drag. I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you're talking about small fish or blue marlin. Same thing. The finger pressure is the quickest way to yeah. add pressure and take it away. Get them. Nice. Perfect. Woo! Nice fish. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Way to put us on them. 
What yeah. a great fish. I mean, the bait was just out there five minutes. They haven't had the second bait out yet. Yeah, just putting the second bait out. <sighs> Let's get him in on that brine. Yeah. So we put a little salt water in the ice. That really makes a big difference when it comes to cooling them quickly. And all you got to do when you bleed them is just cut around that white collar right there. It's going to be sushi quality. Beautiful. Nice job, man. Perfect. Woo! We'll, we'll First be eating one down. good. <laughs> Real-time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Triton Boats. We take America fishing. It's hard to find one boat that fits all your needs, especially in Florida. The 260 Triton fits every one of those needs. It floats shallow and it runs deep. 26 feet long, nice and wide, huge platform on the front, a lot of room in the back, and that's really important. I could put three or four guys on here and comfortably fish all day long. I have a 60 gallon live well. I have two 1100 gallon pumps that are constantly feeding this thing fresh water. The Triton has an incredible amount of storage. That's so important, especially in smaller vessels. The amount of storage, the utilization of the space, a console that's ergonomically designed, a leaning post that fits me perfectly. Everything is laid out perfectly for the angler. Another unique feature about the Triton LTS is this flat pad. On the bottom, there's a 10 inch pad. What that does is that provides lift. And what that lift does is improve your fuel economy. It also allows me to float shallower. It enables me to get in water that's practically 14 to 15 inches deep. For a 26 foot boat, that's pretty incredible. Day one, the winds were supposed to be forecasted at 15 knots. I was a little nervous about even going out with those kind of conditions. I was wondering, you know, could we get it done? We get out there and the wind drops off to nothing. I mean, literally nothing. You were to put helium on the kite, it would be straight up above the boat and still would not be fishable. Tried it for a while and you know what? We just realized that the winds are supposed to be better. The next day we said, let's pack it up, let's head in and prepare for the following day. The great thing about Miami is it doesn't require a long run. The, you know, it's one of those places where you head out, the reef drops right off, and within a mile or so of shallow water, you're fishing in deep water. Uh, interestingly enough, too, about this area, what makes it so good for kite fishing is the depth changes happen so quickly. Day two, a little different out here today. We had no wind yesterday. There's no problem with the wind today. Yeah, no helium needed. <laughs> How are we gonna adjust? What are we gonna do a little different today? Well, instead of helium today, we use just a regular party balloon, tie it to the back. That way, if it hits the water, no panic. Basically, now we're putting a couple leads on the corners because we're gonna fly two kites. So that little bit of lead will actually help rotate the kite, say at about a 45 degree angle, and give us separation. But, so, you know, you kind of have to weigh all those things out. Am I trying to get spread or just one kite out? Okay. So in this case, two kites, long bridle, lots of lead, kick the kites to the side. Now we're covering a lot more water. Get him, Ray. I don't know what we got here. We got something. Is that the uh, titanium? Let out. We'll let get this kite going here. I'll get it one sec. No, we're good. Fighting like a kingfish. Is it? It didn't take long. Nice king. We keeping him or letting him go? Yeah, we'll keep him. He's he's big enough. Tell me when you're ready. You ready? Nice. Nice 
king right there. Not a bad way to start the morning. I'll take Ooh, it. That's way down there. Yeah, let me clip that off, I'll get a new one. Okay. Good going. Nice job. Good going on the gaff. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Maui Jim. Seeing is believing. Talking with Ray, you can have a kite out and one bait could be sitting in 150 feet and the other bait could be in 180 feet. There's that much drastic of a change that uh, the fishing can be really incredible. It, it can be condensed in a, a tight area and usually when you find that depth that the fish are holding offshore, if you stay in that depth, you're gonna have a great day. Some days in tournaments, you know, it'll be a five or 10 foot range where most of the fish are caught. Not that you won't see a few inside or out, but we wanna cover different depths. You know, there aren't a lot of boats out here today. We don't really hear of a certain depth. So that left kite is the one that's really going straight in short, covering more depths. And that's, so like if you were fishing with your buddy and you wanted to catch all the fish, you just put him on the right side, it's easy. Right short. Yeah, right, right short. Short. Got him, Ray? Got something. I don't know what I got. Feeling a little bonita, unfortunately kind of bonita. Maybe a tuna. Head shakes are pretty substantial. I got that black pin yesterday. You said there's been a lot of them around. Yeah, hoping. The difference on the black fin and the, and the bonitas is the black fins pop their jaw a lot and you'll feel a lot harder shake right in the beginning. Not to say this isn't a big bonita, but acting more like a tuna. Is it? Big, look at the rods there, big head shakes. Yeah. And digging, you know. The bonitas a lot of times will get up on the surface and go racing around. Yeah, hey, you see how this fish is really digging deep? Oh, I got the bottom rod there. Here, just grab this line, let me go under it. Uh, I gotta, let me see which way. Can you figure out which way I gotta go? Cut this one? No, I want, uh, let me just catch this tuna. Slide it over the snap. Let go, let go of everything. You ready? That's a nice oh. fish, right? Yeah, they're real easy. Not many wraps, just kind of fingertips. Just fingertips on him. Pull him, pull him, pull him. Nice tuna. Got him. Let me take gap out of him. <laughs> nice fish. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Man. Cool. Thanks, man. Beautiful. Look at that fish. Some good eating right there. Yeah, buddy. Good job. Woo! Must be me. To watch him iron out his technique, he said to me, listen, it's gonna take me a little bit to, to figure all this out, to see how everything's sitting, but he was like a, a machine. As soon as he kind of got it dialed in, it was, it was amazing to watch. It was like art. It was incredible. The guy's at the top of his game. I was like a sponge taking it all in. I was just sat back in, in complete awe. Just non-stop, man. Like you said, Ray, there's no two fish that have been the same. What are we looking at? Come on, what's your prediction? Oh, dude, I can't call this. What do you got? I got a fish. Let's see, it ate a goggle eye on the right long. It's got a wire leader. King so it could fit. be anything. Or a tuna. Or a tuna. Down to the bottom he goes. More like a tuna, huh? I think it's another blackfin. It's crazy, a little less than ideal conditions for the bay boat. I gotta be honest, you know, it's blowing 20 at Fowley Light this morning. And uh, close together. I tell you, it's easy to fly the kite on a day like today. The nice thing about Miami is, you know, we're <laughs> several miles off the, off the cut here. It doesn't take that far of a run to be in fishing water. Take your time getting out here. Once you get set up, the bite is so good. I mean, live bait's the way to go down. The way to go when you're down here. This one ate a goggle eye. We've got an assortment of goggle eyes, pilchards, even pinfish in the well right now. You give you the leader? Uh -oh. Watch out, he may take off here. 
Don't be tip wrapped. Sorry, no sorry, problem. sorry, sir. Oh, cool. What happened was he was wrapped around his pec fin. Watch your tip wrapped. He was wrapped, and you remember I was talking about a fish being upside down on the gaff, they kind of get dis, Tom. yeah. So he was wrapped upside down, and he was just kind of laying there. As soon as he came unwrapped, he took off. Get him, headshot. There you go, throat's even better. Nice, Look at nice. That one. Woo! That one's even oh, bigger. That's a nice black thing. <laughs> you cool. got some chunks cool, of black man. down here. Yeah, that's awesome, man. George, Woo. we're eating good tonight, buddy. Woo! That's a, that is that's a, a fat blackfin. Yeah, it's a nice box, man. Woo! God. Welcome to Miami. Oh, live bait in Miami doesn't get any better than that. Whew. Let's catch another one. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Ray Marine. Don't just go fishing, go hunting underwater. People are always wondering how these power poles work. It's pretty incredible design. Pretty much a scissoring action with a hydraulic ram, you know, hydraulic pump inside the boat, wireless remote, which is awesome, and then just a fiberglass spike that can drive down into the sand, into the mud, or actually hold you on a rocky surface. Another great thing about it is you can operate these together or independently. So I can be in a situation where, let's say, I power pull one, the boat down, I want it to, to pivot one way, I can put one of the blades up, let the boat pivot around, then drop the other blade back down and kind of reset myself. So you can do a lot of different things with these. Uh, dual power pulse seems like maybe a little bit of overkill on some boats, but I tell you, I can't imagine not having both of these on the Triton. I, I can't describe to you how hectic things are when you get out there in a situation like this. The seas are rough. It's Ray and I in a 26-foot Triton Bay boat. You know, the waves are breaking over the bow. We have two cameramen on board that we're trying to fit all this gear in. We got a camera boat next to us running circles around us. Ray's fishing six lines off a kite, of course, a couple flat lines, and then, you know, you get a fish on. Things get, go from crazy to all out hectic. The crazy thing is you're fighting a fish and you still have four lines out the back. You know, he's not pulling those baits in. He's still fishing. He wants, he wants multiples. He wants triples and, and quads of sailfish. So we're continually fishing not stopping what we're doing, and, and it's just all out pandemonium. Got some on here. On? Come on, Georgie. Where at? Right there, the one that's bent. <laughs> Remember, we talked about this. Oh, when in boy. doubt, go for the one that's bent. Might be a sail. Hey, are you gonna reel fishing today? Nope. God. I didn't tell you, I didn't bring my fishing license. <laughs> right long. Yeah, I got you. Sail. Sail. Sail on the right long. Right middle. Right middle. The one that's bent, right, Ray? Yeah, go for the one that's which, bent. How do, you know, how do you know which one to grab? He said, Ray said, grab the one that's bent. Because <laughs> there's so much crap out there, we have no idea what's what. This is crazy. Bonita. Bonita. Here, give me the leader on that one. <clears throat> That's a full grown one. Let me get that leader. Okay. You want me to crank the big engine up? Yeah, and then we'll move, move over there. Oh, oh, awesome. I'll get the whip. Yeah. What a day, man. It's kingfish, big yeah. old black fin. And it's just turning noon right now. Yeah. Good thing you caught us on a good day. God. Uh, it's amazing how much it changes from day to day. I know. Yesterday there was a breath of wind. Wind is key, you know. We got out here, it's rougher than you know what, but you know what? It makes for good fishing. Yeah. Can I jump? Nice. Cool. You got him? You got him. I'm Beautiful, in man. In gear? That is a big sail. That's what it's all about, brother. Nice. 
Fun day, man. Woo! <laughs> I can't handle it anymore. <laughs> I cannot. Uncle? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I call it. Yeah, that was it's cool. It's not one o'clock, and yeah. I'm done. Yeah, that's what you hope for. Wow, what a day. The difference a day makes, huh? Whew. The wind blew and the fish chewed. We came in a bay boat. It was the first time experience for Ray fishing with kites in a bay boat. You know, I've done it before, but I wanted to see the expert do it. I wanted to take it to that next level, and now I realize that I can do that. I can comfortably go out there, fly two kites, fish six lines, may not be as pretty as he did it, but I know it can be done. That thing just jumped from the sky. He jumped out of the tree, landed on the ground. He jumped out wherever he was, right there. He fell all the way down on the ground. I'm on. Tell me when you you're ready. Turn me on. Not quite as much room on a small boat. That's all right. Keeps it interesting. See if I can get after you in the kneecap. 